So do you need a hot wire foam cutting table for scatter terrain, dioramas, miniature props? The answer for most people is probably not. Uh, if you have steady hands and a sharp box cutting knife or X-Acto blade at your disposal, then you're probably fine. You probably don't need to spend any money on one of these, but for a lot of people, they have shaky hands or a lack of time to be fiddling around with a knife and getting those cuts just right and making sure that the edges are smooth. And a hot wire foam factory can streamline a lot of those problems for people. The problem is that these things come at a cost. They can be really expensive or really cheap. And the really expensive ones kind of offer features that you'd expect from the really cheap ones. And the really cheap ones are just kind of really cheap. And don't really offer much. So I decided I wanted to pick one up for myself. And after just doing a quick search on Amazon, I maybe made a mistake or maybe did the right thing. Let's find out. I picked the first one that I saw. It was Amazon's choice, the best seller. Uh, it was some cheap Chinese product that somehow showed up in two days, but it was basically came in an unmarked package and damn, I didn't realize how big the thing was going to be. You probably saw me earlier. They're kind of like, holy, shit. uh, this, thing, <laughs> this thing's pretty big, um, for $130, which is a pretty decent price range. I think to pay for one of these things, any less than that, you're not going to really get a lot of features any more than that. Uh, you might be getting hotter temps out of the wire. Uh, I specifically looked a little closer at the uh, specifications on this model and what really drew me towards it was the fact that it came with adjustable voltage. And that is a feature that's often missing from a lot of these cheaper hot wire foam tables. So 130 bucks for $20 more than the cheapest hot wire cutting table on Amazon, you get an adjustable voltage setting. Well, we got to assemble it first and that actually is a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, the instruction manual was written in broken English. Uh, I should say the use manual, pardon me, for the foam cutter. No E there. Uh, and it was easy to follow, but I think that only had to do with the pictorials. Otherwise, it was a little bit stressful. And the fact that I had to record me myself uh, putting it together was a little bit of a nightmare, trying to get angles. So I'm only using my cell phone here. And, well, let's just say uh, it was pretty easy to put together, except for maybe fishing the hot wire through the bottom and trying to get that onto the tension spring. That was a bit of a pain in the ass. And maybe I did it wrong. Uh, feel free to leave a comment about how you would have done it. But what, it, what matters the most is that it ended up working. Okay, how well? Well, it happened to cut XPS foam really well. Like smooth, very little resistance, even on the highest setting. There was a little bit of resistance, but not enough to where it was a problem. It still felt like it was doing a really effective job of cutting XPS foam with foam core at a quarter inch thick, half inch thick XPS from the hardware store and a full inch thick XPS from the hardware store. It cut it like butter. No problem. The problem started when I threw some EVA foam at it. This is that craft foam you often find at the dollar store or, uh, children's play mat foam uh, in this particular instance this was a play mat um, that I had kind of salvaged and it, it didn't really cut very well the wire doesn't get hot enough even on the max setting to uh, really melt this type of foam so if you were looking to buy this maybe to make some cosplay or even use EVA in your crafts and mini terrain maybe look into getting something else because I don't quite think this is beefy and this the wire is beefy enough to handle it now you can see there's a lot of tension in particular with this one and it's really really slow because I was pushing it <laughs> I, was, I was pushing this thing into this wire and uh, yeah definitely not meant for EVA next up I want to talk about some things that I like and dislike about the design of this unit for one it's very simplistic for two that also means it kind of feels a little bit cheap the whole thing is made out of plywood and you can kind of see in some areas where the CNC router was maybe a little bit sloppy or the blade was dull. There is quite a bit of splintering on many areas of the unit. Uh, the temperature adjustment slash voltage change knob is a part of the AC adapter. So if you wanted to change the temperature on the fly, you'd basically have to bend over underneath your desk or wherever you have this plugged in in order to do so. What I ended up doing was affixing the thing to the machine with some double-sided tape and then zip tying all the loose cables together. 
the uh, problem with doing this then is that it makes the power lead pretty short, so you will need an extension cable. I don't understand why they wouldn't just have <laughs> the switch right on the actual unit. There is so much room here. Uh, I don't... <laughs> it makes no sense. I guess you gotta cut corners in order to keep the cost low. But, in conclusion, would I recommend you get one of these models? Well, yes and no. It really depends on what you're looking to get and what you're looking to do. If you're just starting off with hobby crafting and miniature terrain, this is probably perfect for you. If you've gone out to the hardware store and bought some sheets of XPS anticipating getting one of these things, then you're set because that's exactly what this thing is meant to do is just to cut extruded polystyrene. You throw anything else at it, you might have some problems. It's not really meant to do denser foams like EVA. For my purposes, I'm totally fine with this. I tend to usually have a lot of XPS on hand to begin with and EVA foam isn't exactly my favorite thing to work with and I don't particularly use it for hobby terrain either. Uh, this could be a deal breaker for some people, but if you are just looking to start off by cutting some XPS foam, then I recommend this unit 100%. If you are interested in picking one of these things up for yourself, I've left links in the description below. They are not affiliated links, so I don't see a dime from it. Do with that information what you will, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I do intend on uploading a video every week uh, regarding anything having to do with miniature crafting, hobby terrain, miniature painting. Um, so hopefully we can make this a regular thing. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you soon.